Are you ready to talk about poop today? Hey everyone, my name is Josiah Willis and I'm a licensed real estate agent and investor with Caliber Real Estate here in Bellevue. I help educate my clients on all things real estate and today I'm going to be sharing with you the importance of understanding a septic system. Um, I'm also going to blow off the lid, so to speak, and reveal the stink of misconceptions on septic systems as many clients I run into are actually afraid of septic systems mainly because they don't understand them how they work and uh, what type of maintenance is required. So uh, I will be showing the types of systems that exist. I'll reveal King County and Pierce County rules regarding inspections uh, for transactions and how systems work and much more in this presentation. So you wanna stay to the, tuned to the end though as this will be very informational and could save your butt when buying or selling a home on septic. I actually may even change your mind uh, regarding wanting a house on public sewer versus septic, so stay tuned. But first, a friendly shout out. Uh, the bulk of this presentation was actually given to Caliber, uh, the, the brokerage I'm licensed with, from Evergreen Onsite, who are the experts to trust when you need help with septic needs. Okay, so let's get started. So King and Pierce County require or mandate septic inspections within six months of a purchase, sale, or deed and title transfer of a property on septic. As you can see by the numbers here, this doesn't happen regularly uh, like it's supposed to. So 85,500 identified septic systems in King County alone. Of these, only 20,000 have had a documented routine maintenance inspection since 2009. This amounts to only 23% compliance. So as with any major house system, neglect can create many problems. So property transfer uh, septic system inspections are required in King County regardless of the loan type or purchase and sale agreement. Um, identification of current system condition and feasibility of or repair of expansion can make the difference of whether a property can be used to its full potential. Oftentimes the seller pays for the inspection in a transaction, so that's pretty common. So what is a septic system? Well, at its most basic definition, it's a wastewater treatment plant located entirely on a property, in most cases, can be part of a community system or partially located on an off-site easement in some cases. I won't get into that, but uh, it's used when public sewer is not available and care and maintenance is the responsibility of the homeowner, not the city. So septic systems are used when public sewer isn't available, like I mentioned, or it isn't cost effective to pull public sewer to the property at that time. So here's sort of an example of what uh, the process looks like. So you have your house here, uh, you have the, the septic tank up there coming off the house. Uh, basically, when you, whenever you flush or you have uh, shower water or whatever, uh, garbage disposal, all that gets fed into your, your sewer system and goes into the tank. Uh, solids usually fall to the bottom uh, with a little bit of uh, soap scum up the top, but basically when there's inflow of new water, uh, water gets pushed out the other pipe into um, the, as you see, the distribution box, which then distributes the, the liquid into what's called a drain field. So these three pipes that you see here is the drain field and it's perforated piping normally, um, surrounded by rock, uh, generally speaking. Um, but basically this would uh, allow, as water passes through this perforated pipe, it ends up leaking back into the soil and then the soil actually acts as a filtration device, a natural filtration device. And as water goes down the soil levels, it eventually becomes um, cleansed and re-enters the water system. And then it basically happens all over again. So as you can see, you want to make sure there's rules around where your drain field can actually be in terms of how close it is to your well if you're on, um, if, if the property itself is serviced by a well. Uh, you have to be generally 100 to 150 feet away, your, your septic drain field has to be that distance away from a um, groundwater well. So that's one thing to consider, but this is essentially one of the ways that septic systems work. There's many different kinds, but this is a gravity fed system is one of the ones that you'll find most common in King County um, up until replacement, um, the time of replacing them, because now uh, King County won't allow uh, for uh, set, or gravity fed systems to actually be re installed for a new system. So that's kind of about semantics, but I'll, we'll move on. So who are the professionals? So most professionals hold a single license and they're only allowed to operate under that specific license. So for example, a pumper can't estimate fixes and design an addition or uh, fix to a system. Each type of license takes a different amount of effort and education to obtain. So pumpers do just that. They pump out the contents of septic tanks when they're ready to be pumped. Often they're not qualified to conduct, conduct inspections or identify problems though. So on-site maintainers hold a special license to inspect septic systems. Also, they can create, recreate or modify as-built drawings for time of sale only. I'll get into what an as-built is later. 
but there's also another one. So master installers, they hold a special license to install or make large-scale repairs to septic systems. Uh, they also can perform design work for limited repair proposals, such as tank replacements. Another one is designers. Uh, they're licensed at the state level to design large-scale repairs or brand new systems altogether. So they also perform feasibility evaluations to assess whether vacant land can support a septic system. To install a septic system, the ground needs to be percolated by a soil tester uh, to determine that there's enough natural moisture absorption by the type of soil in the ground on that lot to allow for absorption of, of a system. So this is how important it is to go through a feasibility process when buying vacant land for building maybe a dream home. Um, but the soil type will also determine which type of system will be allowed to install. Um, moving on here. So most people think being on septic is a detractor to a property. That can actually be a misconception. This is for several reasons. Generally speaking, septic systems are actually less expensive over the life of ownership to maintain when compared to paying for public sewer utilities. Uh, they, are, they are actually less harmful on the environment because each system has the wastewater drain into the soil on the respective property site it exists on instead of being pumped underground throughout a vast and large city system that has been known to overflow into the Puget Sound causing environmental problems, but also there's a lot of infrastructure in the ground from a public utilities perspective that is actually getting really old from the pipe perspective. And so, so there's a lot of breakdowns and then that means that anytime a, a sewer pipe fails, you know, they have to come in and dig up the section along the street that failed and all that stuff and that causes headaches for traffic and all that stuff. So that's another thing to keep in mind. But where development is actually going in the future um, in Washington State, uh, it's actually having uh, a lot of water that is on site end up draining into the ground on that site and septic systems would be a part of that. And so um, there's a lot of development terms and lingo that go with that and a lot of rules that are heading that direction um, in terms of stormwater and things like that. I won't go into that, but just know that it's a lot more environmentally friendly, generally speaking, to have septic on uh, a property versus hooking up to a public septic or public sewer. Moving on. So this is a quick synopsis on how this works. I know I already kind of briefly touched on it, but the sewer, water, garbage disposal remains, bath water, all, the all enter the septic system from the main lines to the house. Uh, the water fills up to the top, but this actually doesn't mean it needs to be pumped. This is because uh, when five gallons of water enter a system that is working correctly, five gallons of water um, already in the tank are pushed out the other end towards the drain field. So before it enters the drain field, the wastewater enters a distribution box like I mentioned before, where the water is dispersed equally among multiple drain field lines, which are essentially perforated piping lines like I mentioned. The drain field is where the water leaves the piping to trickle out into the soil, where the so soil naturally filtrates the wastewater until it becomes clean. So as it travels down the soil levels, like again, it is clean by the time it hits the water table below. Uh, then the cycle continues. So as you can see, the solids that don't um, decompose fall to the bottom. So here's another slide. Sludge is actually poop and solids that don't break down and build up over time. The scum layer is actually the fats and oils like shampoos, soaps, cooking oils, etc., that float to the top. So if you've ever seen a septic system being pumped, this is usually a hard crust that forms over um, at the pumper breaks through to get to the water and sludge below. So pumping is needed when scum and sludge take about one third of the tank space. This is typically uh, recommended for pumping every three to five years for a family of four. So this actually brings up a really important point. Uh, septic systems are designed according to how many bedrooms they can support. In other words, how many people will be using the system and living in the house. So larger systems that don't actually have as many people living in the house don't necessarily need to be pumped as often, but it's often a good idea. Uh, another thing to consider is oftentimes um, homes that are actually rated for maybe a three bedroom house. Um, oftentimes if you put an, add a fourth bedroom in there, it, it, you can't really count it as a fourth bedroom if you're going to try to be a seller who sells the property as a fourth bedroom because it's only the septic system alone is only rated for three bedrooms. So the county wouldn't see that as valid extra bedroom and that could be a value uh, issue if you tried to update your house at another bedroom and you can't have additional updates to your septic to support a fourth bedroom. So just wanted to let you know that that could come up in some cases. So uh, we work a lot with flippers and that's something that I like to let my clients know. But anyway, moving on, I digress. <laughs> so what kind of systems are there? So gravity systems are generally uh, three feet down. They're very common. Uh, they're the most common for original construction in King County. But like I said, the county doesn't allow these to be installed anymore in favor of newer technology um, when a new install is required. So 
Gravity systems can actually still be installed uh, soil permitting in other counties in Washington State, but these, these style of systems will uh, still work great and have the least amount of maintenance required because there's actually no electronic pumps re required or alarms, uh, which means less cost as well. Uh, moving on here, uh, here are some examples of other types of systems that are popular. Pump tanks, pumps and alarms, uh, pre-treatment devices like sand filters recirculating gravel or glass filters, aerobic treatment units, ultraviolet disinfection assemblies, um, alternative drain fields like mounds, OSCARs, Glendons. Um, each component requires thorough maintenance and routine inspection on minimum on a minimum annual basis. So these are more uh, these are dependent upon, like I said, the soil and the jurisdiction what they'll allow you to install upon that specific lot and which one of these you'll actually need. So what are the requirements? So per King County Health Department, a time of sale inspection must be conducted and filed by a licensed on-site maintainer within six months of title transfer. So the file inspection must be accompanied by an accurate as-built drawing. And I'll get into as-builts shortly. But per, P per King County Health Department, pumping is actually not a requirement for time of sale. And per King County Health Department, repair is actually not a requirement for time of sale as well. Pierce County is even more stringent about being involved in the process. Snohomish County, they currently have no, at the time of this recording, currently have uh, no transaction requirements, but they're in, they've indicated that they want to put some in place in the, in the near future. So now I'm actually gonna go through some common misconceptions. So here's a, my, a, might be a question that comes up. If the tank was pumped in the last 12 months, we don't need to have an inspection done. That's not true. Uh, you actually have to have one within six months of title transfer. Another question might be, we don't need to have an, an as-built drawing. I know where the lids are. Well, that's not true. The county mandates an as-built drawing. Um, another question might be, or another statement, misconception might be, it's a cash sale, so we don't need to have an inspection. That's also not true. Any deed, title, or transfer of ownership, the system must be inspected per King County rules. Another misconception may be, if the system has any deficiencies, the county won't allow the property to be sold without repairs being made. That's actually not true as well. Uh, the county wants the system documented, but won't necessarily hold up the transaction due to repairs needing to be done. Another misconception could be, my uncle installed some drain field lines a few years ago to fix the system. You don't have to report that, right? Well, wrong. Uh, somebody who's gonna go out there and take a look at the tank's gonna have to, sh to see exactly where everything is and have it drawn on the as-built and make sure everything's to code. Another one might be, the tank has to, has to be pumped in order for an inspection to be done. That's not true. That's actually not uh, in the mandate. Another one may be, I just had the tank pumped a few years ago. Why didn't they do an as-built then? Well, a pumper doesn't necessarily have the license to do an as-built drawing, so um, that could be one of the reasons. Another misconception might be, uh, the title office needs the recording number for the inspection that was recorded. Uh, the rep a report is actually filed with the health department, but there's actually an application number, but not a recording number per se. So that's a misconception. Another one may be, if the system has failed, I can just have it fixed without needing a permit. Well, this is wrong. The health department will have been notified by the inspection company. So an FYI, inspection price is around normally $350 per inspection. Uh, filing the report with King County runs another $98 or so. So looking, you're looking close to $500 or something like that. So I just wanted to go through this real quick. Here's the code for King County, the mandate. You'll notice the word pumping doesn't actually appear at all in this. Again, that's because a system isn't required to be pumped before inspecting. It's the inspection that must be done according to code. So, um, so many as-built as drawings are missing with the county due to the age of the system. Some may not be accurate either because of updates to the property. So um, that's one thing to keep in mind. So basically, I'm going to go through what an as-built is. So an as-built drawing has the footprint of the house depicted by rectangles and labels, the location of the septic tank depicted by a big circle or a rectangle with smaller circles for lids, uh, the location of the drain field depicted by a dashed line, location of plumbing from the house, Directional arrow uh, that gives you an idea of how to orient yourself from north, south, east, and west. The name and date of the person who drew it and property lines, any outbuildings, decks, patios, any impervious surface. So an impervious surface is actually any man-made structure that water can't naturally pass through. Uh, it also has the address and tax parcel number, the approval stamp from the health department when available. And these are the main things that make up an as-built drawing. So moving on, what happens during an inspection? So in a component-by-component component examination and assessment of the system and its functionality are performed. Um, the as-built is matched against the property char characteristics to ensure everything is current and accurate. Um, if an as-built needs to be drawn or modified, measurements are taken in the field and a scale drawing is prepared in the office. So inspection results are entered into an electronic form provided by the county and filed through an online portal. Uh, if any deficiencies are noted, 
uh, report may be held until they are addressed. So a clean report is submitted. Um, an inspection report cannot be modified or updated once it is filed. So it's important that any fixes that need to be done are done before it's actually filed. So let's talk about septic tank and poop. So scum and sludge layers are recorded. Um, pumping is advised if necessary during an inspection and inlet and outlet baffles are examined for condition and stability. So the filter is pulled and cleaned if it's present. Uh, the structural integrity is assessed and access points slash risers and lids are inspected to ensure there are, there are no safety hazards. Uh, the liquid level is actually evaluated. Is it normal operating level or is it high or low? That could indicate a problem. Like if it's too low, it could mean that there's a leak in the tank. So moving on, this is an example of a pump tank. So in a pump tank inspection, the inlet baffle is checked for condition. Uh, the tank's checked for structural integrity. Access points or risers and lids are inspected to ensure they are not a safety hazard, generally by kind of jumping on them and seeing if they're, they're firm. Uh, test is done on the pump to determine how many gallons per minute it pumps out and whether that rate is adequate. Control flow, or the control flow and the alarm uh, flow are tested for proper operation. And the alarm is tested for both audible and visual uh, function. So it's an operational buzzer and bulb basically. So this is an example of a distribution box and this would only be found in a gravity type system. So uh, the, the preference is to locate and expose the distribution box for visual examination upon inspection. Um, they're often three to four feet deep uh, but they're checked for structural integrity and proper level um, of liquids and they can be tested for functional uh, via stress test through the outlet of the septic tank. Um, the common point of failure um, this is the common point of failure for a gravity system, so this is really important to try to find this. Um, over time, this can deteriorate. As you can see in this picture, this one looks pretty old. Um, but that's sort of what you'd normally want to look for in an example of a gravity-fed system. So, when you're testing this, what, what must be done? So, you must have a stress test administered at the time of sale. So, 150 gallons for an occupied home or 450 gallons for a vacant home, uh, which simulates a day's use. Um, the area is examined for signs of ponding, sponginess, maybe it's a little spongy, or surfacing, or mechanical damage. Um, it's not usually excavated for inspection, uh, but the location is verified by probing um, and then also using cameras in the pipes as well. It uh, doesn't necessarily mean this, this tells the whole story, so there's a lot um, involved in the inspection process. So I wanted to show you this real quick. This is an example of a recirculating filter system. Um, but as we go on to the next part, you'll see here the same system is actually hidden underneath this. Uh, the seller or the owner of the property ended up doing a lot of updates um, to, in terms of landscaping to kind of conceal the actual system itself that you just saw on the previous page. Uh, and this kind of makes it a point where uh, you, meet, you need to have a professional um, be able to know how to identify where the tank is, how the system is working and where the parts are because something like this you would never know that that's actually a septic system. So one thing to keep in mind. So what are some of the uh, most commonly identified deficiencies? So oftentimes the septic tank and the pump tank require pumping. The inlet or outlet baffle are loose or deteriorated or possibly missing. The distribution box could be broken or deteriorated. Uh, the drain field might not be taking water or if it, there might fail a stress test. Uh, the pump or floats might need to be replaced. The alarm box might be non-functional or disconnected. The tank top is cracked or tank is deteriorated and requires replacement. The risers and lids maybe not secure or the lid is cracked. Um, it also depends on the scope of work needed to bring the system back into full functionality. So how these are corrected basically. So typical service items like pumping can be addressed immediately. Other deficiencies are either considered small scale repairs or large scale repairs, uh, which would include failed systems. Uh, small scale repairs can be addressed within days or a week. Large scale repairs require a permit and can take several weeks or even months uh, to accomplish. So here's some examples of small scale repairs. Um, a baffle replacement might be anywhere from three to five hundred dollars. Distribution box replacement could be anywhere from eight hundred to a thousand dollars. Risers and lids anywhere from four hundred to a thousand dollars depends on the amount of material needed. Um, the drain field vacuum could be thousand um, dollars. Tank replacement, which would be a large scale repair, it could be anywhere from eight to twelve grand. New drain field um, to convert to a pressurized system could be fourteen to eighteen grand. A uh, new system alternative technology could be anywhere from 25 to 40 grand. Um, or connection to a public sewer, that really depends upon how close you are to a public sewer line. This is actually a really important point here. I don't want you to miss this. So if a system has failed and there is an available public sewer line within 200 feet of any of the property lines on the property, connection to sewer will be compelled. 
So you have to actually connect to sewer if you need to, instead of replacing the existing system. Um, this is act, there's actually a variance on this. You can actually get a variance if you can prove to the county that it would cause undue hardship for you to, um, to make this hookup versus putting in a new system. But it's, uh, you have to basically show that it'd be way too cost prohibitive to do that or it might affect a neighbor or something of that nature. So you could go through the variance route, but generally speaking, if it's within 200 feet, public sewers within 200 feet of the property line, they're gonna make you hook up if, if you have a failed septic on your site. So actually I wanna tell you this crazy story here. So here's a crazy story you might find interesting. Uh, this house uh, that you're looking at is actually in Issaquah, and it was a caliber flip property. So basically you can see, we do a lot of flipping and rehabbing on properties. And you can see here, this photo is the before. We actually purchased this from an investor who ran out of money uh, while he was trying to flip this property. And he sold it to us and we turned it into this on the far right. So pretty cool project. But one thing that came up was septic. So what we had done was we actually inspected the septic system, had someone from King County Health Department come out. They took a look at it, said the septic looks good, it passes, you're good for a transfer of sale now. So we, once we finished the property, and the updates, uh, they went to list the property, and a neighbor, a nosy neighbor, ended up saying, hey, uh, he ended up calling the King County Health Department and said, you probably should come out and re-inspect. I'm not really sure why he did that, because we actually did already have it inspected, but uh, they sent out another guy, it wasn't the same guy, but from the same department, came out and said, uh, you need to replace the septic system. And they were like, and our, our investors were like, what, why? And he said, uh, we actually even showed him the bill of health that we got from the previous inspector that saying everything was good. And he said, no, because these new updates are going to um, make the house life basically last longer than the actual system itself being used to service the house. So you need to replace it with a brand new system. So unfortunately, that meant they had to cut up a bunch of concrete to access the old system, dig it out, and then replace it. And that was over 20 grand or so. And that was definitely a cost they were not expecting to pay. But um, all, when all is said and done, it's really important that you follow uh, King County Health Department's rules, but uh, sometimes you may get different opinions based on who you talk to at the county. So that was an interesting situation that ended up working out fine, but uh, keep in mind stuff like this does happen. So moving on. So I want to talk a little bit about the permitting process for large scale, re scale repairs. So any large scale repair requires a permit through the County Health Department. Uh, because of the number of parties involved in facilitating the repair, the time frames can take as long as two to three months to complete, uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, it's, a, it's essential that sellers, buyers, and or investors be aware of the length of time and that the scope of work that large-scale repairs merit so that if you're trying to close a transaction, you understand the, the actual timelines needed. Um, here's an example of an installation on-site. As you can see, uh, they dig down and make the base level for installing the tank flat. Uh, this tank is actually a concrete tank. Um, and it's being craned into place basically, but here's kind of a perspective of how deep this hole is. I mean, basically you could fit a car, uh, an SUV into this hole. So that's, that's how big of a space is needed for a septic system like this. So as you can see here by these two photos, there's different types of system, system materials. Uh, one's concrete and the other one on the right is polyethylene. So in this case, concrete and polyethylene um, are two different systems that actually can have the same capacity depending on the size of tanks, um, but there are differences in uh, benefits as well. So the polyethylene tank, obviously, uh, one thing is it's super light, right? It, it probably weighs only 300 to 600 pounds, whereas this concrete tank probably weighs around uh, 10,000 pounds or something like that. Um, but another thing too to consider is the polyethylene tank doesn't have any gaps between the lid like this one does. As you can see here, the lid right here, there's a crack. Over time, um, roots and plant roots and trees, uh, tree roots, actually like um, your poop oftentimes because it's obviously like a natural fertilizer, right? So they'll try to weed their way into um, the cracks in the lid of the concrete tank um, and eventually start separating that out and there could be leaks involved in that. But this polyethylene tank doesn't have any cracks around the lid. Uh, so that would, that would be a case for why um, you don't need to have concrete or why it might be a good idea to do polyethylene instead. So that's something to keep in mind. Also maneuverability behind a house to install a new tanks is going to be much easier with a tank size of that of the polyethylene. So that's something to consider as well. Here's just an example of installation on site as well. As you can see here, on the, I wanted to show you on the very far right um, photo over here um, that the excavator that's putting the sand in, that, that's going to be probably around your drain field so that water can actually, um, the liquids can actually drain out of the perforated pipe in order to um, soak into the soil. So that's probably what that fill is there for. 
Um, so following the installation, if any electrical work is needed, which is often most times the case, um, it must be completed and approved by LNI or the local inspection jurisdiction uh, before the next step can actually be taken place. So after notification, the electrical wiring is complete. Uh, the installer will make a return visit to start up the system and dial in all the settings. This visit also ensures the system is prepared uh, for demonstration during the final inspection. So let's talk about the final inspection and approval process. So the installer then notifies the designer that the project is prepared for final inspection. Uh, it is the designer's responsibility to schedule the final inspection or pressure test um, and notify the installer of the date and time uh, to appear. So it can take two to three weeks for the final inspection to be uh, scheduled, uh, during which time the system must remain partially exposed for examination. Uh, so if the installation is uh, approved at the time of the final inspection, the installer can schedule the backfill to occur to fill in basically all the dirt around the tank and, and things like that. So uh, when the backfill is scheduled, the install crew returns to fill in the holes and smooth out the surfaces. Um, some hand raking is performed generally as a finishing measure to make the landscaping look decent. But often rocks and sticks and other debris turned up during ex excavation is evident on the surface. So. Uh, final landscaping restoration is the responsibility of actually the homeowner. Um, it's essential to prepare sellers and buyers for what the finished backfill will look like. So that kind of becomes my role as a real estate agent, making sure that you understand what it will look like. The next slide shows examples of completed backfills. So essentially here's what um, the backfill looks like. Obviously raked dirt. You can see the riser lids in some cases over there. Oftentimes they'll plant grass over the area. But it's important that no, you know that no impervious surfaces can be built over a drain field. So an impervious surface, like I mentioned before, is any man-made surface that water can't pass through naturally. And that would be like sidewalks, decks, um, patios, anything like that cannot be constructed over a, a drain field site. You can put grass there, but water basically has to be able to permeate, permeate that site and also has to allow for um, natural um, exposure so that you can actually access the system in case of any failures. So here are a couple just a couple more uh, examples of backfill areas. So after the project is complete, the installer provides a backfill notification document to the designer, who then submits the final as-built packet to the county health department. There is no post-installation inspection report um, automatically generated. So if a clean inspection report is required for closing, one would need to be uh, specifically requested an additional county filing fee and likely an inspection fee uh, would also apply. So the final as-built packet is submitted in triplicate. So one copy remains on file, one is mailed to the homeowner of record, and one is mailed to the designer. Uh, the installer does not receive a copy. So I want to talk about reserve areas real quick. So reserve areas are often overlooked. Many new systems or large-scale repairs have a reserve area identified on the as-built. The reserve area is actually set, it sets aside a piece of land to be used when the existing drain field fails. So the reserve area must be kept in pristine condition and free of any, um, any soil compaction or disturbances um, and, and construction of any impermeable surfaces like sheds, decks, patios, um, concrete, slabs, etc. cannot be installed over the reserve area. Damaging the reserve area can have uh, grave consequences for the property if the main system fails and then also the reserve area doesn't work. So final thoughts. So education is key, guys. Collect any and all relevant information you can about the septic system before listing or purchasing a home. Um, if vacant land is being purchased, make sure you consult with the designer to determine the feasibility of septic system installation. It's really important if it hasn't been perked already. Always hire a licensed professional. So as always, this is Josiah Willis here to educate and inform you. If you're in the market to buy or sell real estate, give me a call. Uh, if you're considered working with an agent, make sure that they know uh, what they're doing because uh, septic, or se septic or sewer costs can actually make or break the piggy bank for buyers and sellers. So make sure the agent you choose represents your best interest. And uh, give me a call at 360-560-8073 if you would like to have a friendly conversation about working together um, and if you are indeed in the market to buy or sell real estate. Uh, once again, I'm Josiah Willis with Caliber Real Estate, and as always, invest wisely. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the uh, Septic Systems 101. 
uh, video and I hope it was very informational to you. But I wanted to also tell you to please watch my other video, uh, Public versus Septic Systems, where I compare the pros and cons to uh, public sewer versus septic. For those of you who may be a little bit nervous about buying a septic or not sure what your options are, watch that video. I think you'll really like it. But also I wanted to tell you Please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on future videos. Um, I oftentimes ask real estate professionals and experts in the, in the field, even though I am a licensed agent, I work with lots of different people, including attorneys, um, estate planning uh, companies, uh, you, you name it, mold remediation, uh, CPAs, everything in, in the middle, inspectors. I actually interview these people and it will probably be uh, to your benefit whether or not you decide to use me for uh, your real estate transaction. But um, please subscribe, uh, share uh, this video, or like my page, or even comment if you have any um, pointers for me or what you'd like to learn or what you might want to have a future video be. Let me know in the comments below. Um, you can also visit my Facebook page if you haven't already, uh, Josiah Wheels Caliber. So um, thanks again, guys, signing off. And uh, yeah, watch my other video. Thanks.